I've got some mystery hardware in this box. Can you tell what it is? Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dave from Chase the Summit. In this video, we'll be talking about some new features that are rolling out to the Coros ecosystem. This will affect most of the Coros devices. I've got the Apex, Apex Pro, Vertex, Vertex 2, and Pace 2 here. Let's get the small ones out of the way first. Some of the minor tweaks that they've added to the new Coros Vertex 2. The first one of these features is actually going to be multi-pitch climbing mode, which is kind of interesting to me because I am an ice climber and we do have some multi-pitch routes here in the Northeast to access this, you basically just dive into a standard activity as you usually would. So I'll click here and you can see I've got all of my standard activities here, like running, indoor running, trail running, etc. There it is. Uh, now you can see there's a new activity titled multi-pitch. And for those of you that are unaware what a multi-pitch climb is, it's essentially a climb that's so tall that climbers break it up into a series of smaller pitches because your rope is only 60 to 70 meters long. So if you're on a 300 meter, you know, tall rock face, you have to break that up into a multi-pitch climb where you build an anchor, you tie yourself off, you bring up your second climber, and then you repeat that process over and over again until you get to the top of your climb. So let's take a look at how multi-pitch climb mode works and why it's advantageous over just using something like the climb activity profile. Once you dive into the multi-pitch climb mode, you can see that it's kind of like the triathlon mode where it's got different phases of the activity. But instead of like swim, bike, run in triathlon, you've got approach, climb and descent and that's for the hike up to the climb the actual climb and then the the hike out of the climb once you get to the top. And if we dive into the settings of multi-pitch climb mode, you can see here that you can choose your grading system. So this would depend if you're climbing rock or ice or if you're in different parts of the world. So let's look at how this works. Once I click start, it's going to go into the approach phase. And this would be me hiking up to the bottom of my climb. And now you can see that they've pre-configured the data screens to be kind of relevant for climbers. So here you've got your elevation, your elevation gain, your elevation loss. And if you scroll down, you get your heart rate, your distance, lap time, etc. cetera. In here, you can see the information for the phase you're in. You've got approach up top, your phase distance, phase elevation gain, phase time, and phase elevation loss. So now that I'm done with my hike up to the climb, I'll go ahead and click the main button here on the right. And now I can click next. And now I can choose what I wanna do next. Am I climbing or am I descending? So I'll go ahead and click climb on ice grade. And you can see it says now I'm in climbing mode. Now, if I was done with pitch one of my climb, I can go ahead and click the right button here again. Now I can go ahead and click next and I can enter how many pitches have been climbed since I started, I'll say two. And now I can select what the grade was, what I thought the grade was when I climbed the route. So this is uh, set to ice grades right now. So it would be water ice one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, water ice seven would be really hard to climb. <laughs> I'll go ahead and select water ice seven. And now that pitch was recorded. Now I can go ahead and say, I wanna descend my climb. And now it's saying to hike out of my climb. So this will record the data for the hike out of the climb. Now I can pause the activity, select finish, and I'm done. And this will record over to my Coros app so I can share that on Strava or whatever. And the cool thing is that all of the pitch information is saved to the activity. So it'll show how many pitches you've climbed, uh, what the grade was on each one of those pitches. Now this is a pretty niche feature and not everybody is a multi-pitch climber, but for those who are, this is pretty cool. And one new exclusive feature to the Coros Vertex 2 is that they've actually added the ability to customize the backlight button at the top here. Basically to do this, you just dive into your settings here, the little cog icon, go ahead and click that. And now I can scroll down to more settings. And now there's a new option for light key. Once I click on light key, right now it's set to off, but I can also have it do various other things. So I can dive into my compass, my oximeter, the HRV test, my map, etc. So I'll go ahead and click map. And now when I leave and go back to my watch face, if I long press this top button, it'll drop me right into the map on my Coros Vertex 2. And I can imagine this would be useful for people who are storing music on the watch. You can dive right into the music on the go without having to navigate through the menu too much. Uh, it's good to see that they've added some level of customization here. Okay, now let's talk about what's arguably the most exciting update that's happening today, and that's Strava Course Maker integration with Coros devices. Basically, now you can design a course using Strava's Course Builder on their website, and then sync that activity over to your Coros Watch 
seamlessly without exporting or importing or using USB cables, none of that stuff. Previously, Chorus watches could navigate a course pre-made using a GPX file, so you could use something like Gaia GPS or export an activity from Strava, and then you could import that activity into your Chorus app on your phone and then sync that over to your watch. But honestly, it was a little bit clumsy and it took a little bit of a learning curve to get used to and it wasn't just seamless. Now Chorus has made that process a lot easier. And what's exciting about this is that it's not exclusive to the Chorus Vertex 2. It's actually available on any Chorus watch that supports navigation. So that means it's the Apex, the Apex Pro, the Chorus Vertex, and the Vertex 2. All these watches are now capable of doing this with Strava. One important thing to note about this is that the Strava course builder tool is only available for paid subscribers. If you have the free version of Strava, you won't be able to do this at all. Okay, let's take a look at how this works. Now I've got my Strava app pulled up and I went into my root builder or course builder within the Strava app. Now I can go ahead and click the little pencil in the bottom right corner here and then select a starting point and an end point. So basically I just draw with my finger around this lake at the Middlesex Fells. That's my local trail running spot and that will create a course. Just like that, really easy to do. Now at the bottom there, you can see some of the information from this route I just made. Seven miles long, 780 feet of elevation gain. And now I can click done, and I can give this a name. Koros Test Route. And one important thing you need to do before you close out the Strava app is make sure the little star icon in the bottom right corner here is illuminated and filled in red because that means it's going to sync with your other devices. I'm gonna go ahead and click save now. So one thing I've noticed with this process is that the sync between Strava and Chorus actually takes a few minutes. It's not like instantaneous. I don't know if that's because I'm using a beta version of the software right now or if that's just how it is. It just takes a little while to sync. Okay, now if we jump over to the Chorus app, you can see here I'm at my dashboard and I go over to the little shield icon at the bottom of the screen here. I can scroll down and enter the navigation routes library and right at the top there you can see my 7.02 mile route that's labeled Koros test route and you can see there's a couple of them there. Diving into that you can see it's the same course that I designed in Strava and it's just as easy as that. There's no manual sync. You don't have to click any buttons or anything. It just shows up in your navigation route library, which is really cool. So from here, I can go ahead and just click sync with watch and I'll go ahead and select my Coros Vertex 2 for this example. Now I've clicked sync with watch and now you can see that my watch says completed. And now if I go into an activity on the watch like trail running, go down to settings, navigation, scroll down, you can see there's my Coros test route right here. And I can just click start course and I'm off and running. So this makes the navigation feature on Chorus watches way more powerful now that there's no clunky exporting and importing. If you're a Strava user and use that course builder tool in Strava and you have a Chorus watch, this is a welcome upgrade and you're really going to appreciate this. The only thing that's missing from this whole process is the ability to add waypoints. Like if you have eight stations and you wanna drop a pin there and have that show up on the watch, Chorus watches are actually capable of displaying waypoints, but unfortunately Strava doesn't allow you to add waypoints to your activity. And finally, let's talk about that mystery box I was waving around earlier. This is actually the brand new Chorus Vertex 2 watch carabiner. This is a really unique accessory for the Chorus Vertex 2. Let's take a look. Okay, so the idea here is that you're a climber, you're wearing a climbing harness, you've got a Chorus Vertex 2, you don't wanna wear the Chorus Vertex 2 on your wrist because you need your wrist to be able to jam it in cracks or whatever you're wearing and gloves, and maybe it's just not in a convenient location because it is a pretty big watch. Well, Coros has answered your prayers with the Coros Vertex 2 watch carabiner. Let's get this thing out of the box and I'll show you how it works. All right, there it is. And this thing is a tank. It is solidly built out of aluminum, I think. It looks like it's milled out of a single block of aluminum. It's really robust feeling. Uh, it's pretty cool. Basically, you take this watch carabiner, and then you remove the strap from your Chorus Vertex 2, which is really easy with the quick fit system on the back. Now I've got my watch carabiner here. I've got my Vertex 2 here. Basically you put the bottom in first and drop it into the little groove. And then you simply just push on the watch until it clicks into the carabiner. Now I've got my Chorus Vertex 2 securely attached to this carabiner. And this carabiner has a little clip. 
and I can, you know, put this on my climbing harness, put this on my backpack, I can wear it out front. And uh, yeah, this is a pretty cool accessory for the Chronos Vertex 2. And the benefit there is that the watch's temperature sensor, you can see the widget there, would actually reflect the ambient temperature around you instead of the temperature of your wrist. Because once you strap the watch to your wrist, it's no longer reading the ambient temperature, it's picking up all of that warmth from your wrist. The one thing I don't know about this is how much it costs. I have a feeling it's going to be pretty expensive because of how premium it feels. And I almost feel like they could have made it out of plastic to save a couple of bucks, but uh, it's pretty cool the way they built this. Okay, that kind of wraps up this video and all the new features that are coming to these Coros watches and the Coros Vertex 2 and this new carabiner. If you're excited about these new features that have rolled out today, make sure you comment down below and tell me which one excites you the most. And if you're gonna buy this crazy carabiner, that's all I've got for this one. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up down below subscribe to the channel, comment, do all the things down there because it really helps me out. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.